eternal life. What's the purpose? First John chapter 5, verse 13. I believe God this morning that these things I have written to you, says Apostle John, who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. And I believe this is the purpose of this world that you receive this morning. The message today is that you shall believe in the name of the Son of God. That's number one. That you may believe in the name of the Son of God. John put down this word and revelation of the life of Christ when he tell you that he's the bread of life, he's the light, he's the way. Trying all he can to communicate to humanity who God is and who his son Jesus is and who the Holy Ghost is, is for us to believe in God, believe in his son and the spirit that he has sent. But essence of today's morning is for you to believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you also have what eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. So there are three things that he believed and he hoped for. One is to believe in the name of the Son of God. Two is to know that you have eternal life. To know that you have what? Eternal life. And three, that you continue to believe. So one thing is to believe. But for you to believe, there are certain things you need to know. And then after you have believed, it's also important that you should have eternal life. Why? Because it is in having eternal life that you continue to believe. Praise God. So eternal life is essential for one to believe. Those who live a life of faith are those who have received eternal life. No wonder the Bible said, a just man shall live by what? Faith. So the life of a just man is produced through faith. Acts chapter 3 verse 6. Acts chapter 3 verse 6. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but I, but what I do have I give. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Do you know, children of God, that there is something that you have that is as such as, as I have. There is something that God gave to you that you have that is called eternal life. Somebody declare, I have eternal life this morning. It is the eternal life that you have received that licenses you to be able to extend that life to other people. Peter said, as such as I have, I give unto you. As soon as we recognize the fact that we have been given eternal life and we also are mandated and are expected to share it. That's the reason and the purpose I stand here this morning. Confident and grateful to God that I have eternal life. As such as I have also received, I want you to have. And if you are listening this morning, can I declare over your life in Jesus' name, receive eternal life. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for that to be effective then you must want to ask me what is this eternal life what is eternal life i want to live eternal life god save, save my, my soul, soul. define eternal life is that it's the same life that God has 
Eternal life is the life of God. Eternal life is the life of God. Eternal life is the same life that God has. The God kind of life. In Greek, it is called Zoe. Zoe. It is the God kind of life. The God kind of life. The very life that God has is what you call eternal life. In John chapter 1 from verse 4. The very life that God has, that is eternal life. The Bible said, in him was life. And the life was the light of man. And so this scripture defines eternal life to us. As a life in Christ also. So that life that is in Christ, the Bible also called it the light of men. And that's why the Bible also called us the light of the world. The children of God have eternal life. And that life has made us to become what? Light to God. And we are that light of men. Eternal life is the life of God. And that life of God is the light that is in a man. I believe God today. First John chapter 5 verse 11 to 13. Understanding eternal life helps and brings everyone to the deep knowledge and revelation. First John chapter 5 from verse 11 of what this Zoe life is. Hallelujah. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. So where is the testimony of eternal life? The Bible said, and this life is in his son, Jesus Christ. So, if you are looking for the testimony of eternal life, are you looking for eternal life? Where do you find it? In Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus Christ in his life that you have proof that we have eternal life. I want us to know this today. That in having eternal life, people, we have guarantees that we have this eternal life today we have guarantees that we have this eternal life today verse 13 I'm going to start by making us understand one or two things then there will be an understanding of seven guarantee of your eternal life if you have Jesus if you have what? Jesus and that's why today's meeting is a compulsory request that seeing that Jesus is the source of eternal life so you must have to receive him why is it necessary to receive him let's look at verse 13 then I will tell you why you have to receive him to have it the Bible said these things are written to you who believe in the name of the son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Listen, people, God bless you this morning, wherever you are, you have joined us. You have an eternal life. And that eternal life is the life of God. Understand from the basics before I go further, that you have animal life once more. And animal life makes a man to have an animal characteristics. An animal does not talk like a human being, no matter how you want to train them to. They cannot think all the way like a human being. They don't have soul like a human being. That gives them an animal life. There's what we call a plant life. A plant does not work. Does a plant work? Does a plant move like human beings? Their characteristics is in roots. Plants are rooted. They draw their own kind of life from the soil through their roots and they have sap that carries their life. 
which when you cut them out from their roots, they die. So you know where their life is. The life of a human being is very, very different. So we have eternal life versus human life also. And the source and the origin of the human life will need to be understood well so that you'll be able to run in parallel with eternal life. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 27 to 28 will help us to understand that. But before we get there, let's look at Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. So we see from the very beginning, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, And God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being that you call what? A human being. A living being. So, here we see God release his breath. He breathed into his nostrils. God breath. God's breath. It's God's life passed on to human being. Now let's also go further to understand why I'm saying to us today that we have Zoe and God's life. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 27. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So when man was created, man was created, in man was male and in man was what? Female. And that was the nature of God. Now verse 28. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion. Now these are the characteristics. The power given to the man. When man was created and man had received the mandate and purpose and that purpose and mandate of man was God blessed man and said to him, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the beds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And I tell you sincerely, when man understands his purpose, and man also receives the eternal life to fulfill that purpose, man will live a successful life. And this is the reason why it's important to understand the need of eternal life rather than walking into deception and receiving the human plan. And this is the plan that we see today being sold out to us, which is the planned parenthood. When a man is told just have one man and one woman, what do they call it? Child, birth, control, birth and all that. Because you can see that this is purely anti Christ because you see when you are telling people that they should just not you know they plan to reduce population together and they plan to make sure that humanity does not grow are you understanding me to fill up the earth and man does not have eternal life okay to be able to subdue the earth a man does not have dominion over the fish dominion over the sea dominion over the birds dominion ever everything that moves upon the earth it is contrary to God's original plan for creating humanity and that is why it's important now for man to understand what eternal life is because when you know what it is then you know this is what you need humanity does not need vaccines so what humanity needs is the restoration of this eternal life which Jesus did for us the Bible said for God so loved the world John chapter 3 verse 16 after man fell a man lost his place by the sin of who? Adam and Eve when man sinned man fell out of this divine purpose and man was cast out of the presence of God and that we see in the book of Genesis chapter 3 from verse 2 to 5 we see the woman say unto the serpent 
that is entering a discussion and a negotiation which she had no business with. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the tree of what? The garden, verse 3. And so, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. So it was in man touching this fruit and eating it that man died and lost eternal life. Eternal life is a life lived in obedience and in faith. Eternal life is the life that is a God-given life, is a Zoe life. So as man lost it, and to who? The devil. The Bible said in John chapter 10 verse 10, telling us clearly what is the assignment and the agenda of the devil. John chapter 10 verse 10, the Bible said he's a thief. He does not come except to steal. And so he crept into the garden and he stole from man. He comes to kill and he killed eternal life. He comes to destroy and he destroyed communion between God and man. But Jesus now gave us his own parallel. But he had come that we may have what? Eternal life. And that we may have it more abundantly. So today, you are going to either receive the adversary and his advent in your life. And when you walk with the devil, you can be sure that his assignment is to ensure that what he has told you, you will never recover. Or you receive Jesus and then you shall receive this eternal life that was lost to humanity and then live it and have it more abundantly. And that's why he said that this is a morning that you will have to receive eternal life. And also have it abundantly through receiving Christ. Because the Bible said from the book of Romans from chapter 3, from verse 23, the Bible said all have sinned due to this disobedience that happened. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so because of this, there's a wage. And that wage is given to us from the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23. And it says, for the wages of sin is what? Death. And so for man to have sinned, the consequence of it was to die. Therefore Adam died and in death, Adam lost God's life, which is eternal life. But there's a gift of God and that gift of God is what? Eternal life. So now God gave us Christ and that is the life in Christ Jesus. And I tell you sincerely, the only way to restore what man lost in the garden is through the gift of God, which is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our God. And this is the best and the way I know I can tell you and explain to you why you need to be born again. And why, why, why they both shake at the bayana hagade. That when you receive Jesus, you can now have this eternal life. And you will no longer die. You will not perish. What Adam lost, one man, another man, to Christ Jesus restored to humanity. So you can receive Jesus by praying with me this morning again and invite him by saying, I receive you, Jesus, as my personal Lord and Savior. As you invite him as he comes in, the Bible says by faith, as you pray this prayer this morning, you have invited the one that has the eternal life. When he comes, he brings in that life. And that way you can have the life of God again in you. Amen.